All right, our discussion this time is going to be on shunt regulation circuits. In this case, I'm using a TL431 adjustable shunt regulator, which also acts as a sort of variable Zener diode, but we're using it in its shunt configuration. The circuit consists, okay, got an input resistor, a PNP power transistor, few resistors, the TL431, which looks like a trans little transistor itself, and a potentiometer to adjust the voltage. In this case, I've adjusted it for, I got 16 volts going in, and I adjusted it for about 10 volts coming out at 167 milliamps is what I measured. And of course, I can vary it on down. I can set it up for right for 12 volts, or I can take it all the way down to lower. But of course, if I'm putting in 16 volts and I'm running the shunt regulator at 5 volts output, I'm going to have to use some bigger resistors or else that transistor there is going to get really hot. So let us look at the schematics and I'll explain what a shunt regulator actually does. Now I'll describe how to use a TL431 shunt regulator to act as a high powered shunt regulator in conjunction with a transistor. Briefly again, the TL431 is a three pin device. Through a voltage divider it can act as a sort of variable Zener diode or variable um, shunt current source. Internally it has a 2.5 volt reference, an op amp, a couple of diodes, and an output transistor. All right, let's look at this generic high-powered shunt regulator circuit. We have an in, you have to choose the proper input resistance based on the current of the load. In this case, I used, as usual, a light bulb. And the current that flows through RN is going to divide between the TL431, the shunt transistor Q1, and the load. How this works. You set IK by adjusting R1 and the R2 R1 config, um, voltage divider configuration. Again, your voltage out is 1 plus R1 divided by R2 times V ref times 2.5 volts. What you're going to do is you notice that Q1 emitter is connected to the plus side of the power supply. The collector goes to ground. IK, that's the current, that's the cathode current that you set by adjusting R1, produces a voltage drop across R3. That voltage drop from R3 controls the base current in Q1 across the base emitter junction. The higher the voltage across R, R3, the harder Q1 will conduct and the higher the emitter collector current for Q1. If I have more current going through the shunt than the load, then this, basically it comes down to Depending on the resistor value, the circuit can only supply so much current. More current goes to the transistor shunt circuit. That means less current for the load. Let's look a little closer at this. All right, here's an example of what not to do when building these circuits. I want a voltage output of 10 volts, so I adjust R1 to produce 10 volts output. The particular light bulb that I was using for a load draws 167 milliamps at 10 volts. I know this because I measured it. What does that leave us? If the voltage out is 10 volts, then I only have 6 volts that I have to drop across R in. 
So if you divide 6 volts by 30 ohms, the most current that I could hope to get from this circuit at 10 volts is 200 milliamps. What happens if I try if the load suddenly has to draw 200 milliamps for some reason? Then I'll lose my voltage regulation totally because I'm still having to draw some current at least for IK through the TL431. There's no way that I can maintain 10 volts output by drawing 200 milliamps or more in this load. I don't have, and Q1 would be totally shut off. I would just lose all of my voltage regulation. So keep that in mind. Look at your, your desired voltage out and look at our, the resistance of this input resistor. Subtract out from what is supplied whatever the difference voltage is, divide by Rn, and you can get how much current is actually available at 10 volts. This circuit regulates voltage the right way. Rn has been now changed to 20 ohms, and I still want to adjust it for 10 volts out and 167 milliamps on my light bulb. What happens? At 10 ohms, of course, at 20 ohms, and we're having to drop 6 volts, I have 300 milliamps available. This will cause, okay, this, this lower resistance here tries to cause the voltage to rise. This is detected and fed back through R1, and it increases the um, reference current and thus increases IK, that's the current through the TL431 cathode anode current. What does that do? A higher IK means a larger voltage drop across this resistor. A higher voltage differential between the emitter base of Q1 causes Q1 to conduct harder. So the excess current that I'm not using in the load is shunt it to ground through Q1 and make sure you heat sink Q1 it'll get hot. Q1 in my test circuit was a 2SB633 with an HFE of 114. I have a transistor checker I know what the gain is actually. But you don't have to worry about that level of it because you can adjust it for the appropriate voltage output. So I have plenty, so what if I needed to draw 200 milliamps? Well, my extra 33 milliamps would be subtracted from the current going through Q1, and it would still maintain 10 volts voltage regulation. That's how it works. Um, that's all there is to these um, circuits. Just be aware of your relationship between your voltage out, your input resistor, this is the way all shunt regulators work, and adjust R1 for the desired output voltage. Now, um, and that's pretty much it. So I hope that this gives you some circuit ideas and was useful to you. Um, please visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com and thanks for visiting.